It's Wednesday in the 22nd week following the Festival of Pentecost, November the 4th, 2020. As always, we are being strengthened by Christ through his word. Wednesdays we learn from the small catechism, and right now we're in the midst of the Lord's Prayer. And it's a good reminder that the Lord's Prayer is given to us in the Gospel according to St. Matthew. We also get it in Luke chapter 11, but uh, what we're most familiar with when it comes to the Lord's Prayer is the uh, rendition that Christ gives us in Matthew chapter 6 as part of the Sermon on the Mount, when his, uh, he tells his disciples, when you pray, pray like this. And today we're really ready to look at the second petition, which is very apropos for us because just yesterday, as you all know, was election day here in the United States. We're still waiting for an official result about the presidential election and how good is it for us as we think about all that, whether your candidate, your preferred candidate is elected or not, whether you think both candidates are not really uh, worthy of your vote, no matter where you stand on this matter, how blessed we are that we get to pray, thy kingdom come. Here in the United States, we have a president. We also have a king, namely our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a huge thrust throughout the gospel, according to St. Matthew. We noted that in yesterday's devotion as well, that uh, Christ is always talking about how the kingdom of the heavens is dawning upon God's people right there in Christ, because he is our true king. So this prompts the good question for us, well, what is God's kingdom if we are praying for it to come? And here's one of the challenges for us, is that we usually hear that word kingdom in English as a... Uh, kind of a static term, that it talks about a territory, a region over which uh, the king will rule. But that's really not the use of the term within the biblical languages. Whether you want to go back to Old Testament Hebrew or here with the New Testament written down for us in Greek, uh, the word for kingdom is really a dynamic term that describes the activity of a king. So that a king rules and reigns. And so that's really what God's kingdom is, is it's his ruling and reigning over us. And how does God rule and reign? Very different than what we would expect an earthly king to do. Uh, an earthly king usually is uh, ruling and reigning by power, and he is looking for his subjects to serve his interests. We may even think often that here in the United States, while we don't have a king, that this is often how those who are in power approach things as well. But not our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what is God's kingdom? It's this dynamic, gracious reign of God in my life. Here's the thing. God is king. Christ is king. Whether we pray for it or not, whether we want it or not, he simply is king. After all, he's the creator. He has authority over all things. Uh, he even uh, can rightly say in Matthew 28, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So he has authority over all things. So what are we really praying for here? Well, we want that dynamic, gracious reign of God to be found in my life. I need his gracious reign. So what would that actually look like? Two things characterize the gracious reign of God in Christ within my life. The first one is that the Father gives the Spirit so that we believe his holy word. There you see God's gracious reign. The very fact that you have faith so that you trust in him. So that here's your gracious king who sends his Spirit that you might always have faith. Now, notice that is pure gospel. It's all about God's gift and therefore your faith, your trust in him, that even the faith that you have in your king is a good gift that he has given to you. Pure gospel. And from that gospel flows good works. So that having received the Spirit so that you believe, the second thing that characterizes God's gracious reign in your life is that you lead a godly life here in time, but also there as in heaven in eternity. Now, living a godly life here involves a couple of things. For one, we do seek to live after God's word, to remain faithful to it. That most certainly is part of it. But I also recognize having a sinful nature, I fall down on that every day. Every day I fail in various ways to live the godly life for which Christ has claimed me. So part of my godly life then is to turn to my king, to Christ, 
and know that he graciously reigns in my life. So what is he going to do with that sin? He's going to forgive it. He's going to remove it so that it no longer defines my life. But instead, my life is defined again by his gracious rule and reign. Now, that is a wonderful thing to keep in mind because this never changes no matter who's in office, no matter what your outlook may be upon an election. Here's one thing that always holds true. Christ reigns within your life with grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we do pray that you would send your kingdom into our life, that through your Son, Jesus Christ, you would reign within our life. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that we might trust in Christ and his gracious reign. Forgive our sin when we fall astray and continue to work in us that we might live godly lives here in time and there in eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.